Welcome back. Welcome to our podcast. We've been working on a series here for several weeks now on transmuting your body into a powerhouse. And basically what you want to become is Beersheba. You know, you want to have (laughs) a body that's a powerhouse. And I can speak from personal experience that she's a great example of a powerhouse. (laughs) That's good. Should have seen her working chest to do the gym. Moving on. Anyway. That's what every um, woman wants to hear. Look at my chest muscles. Athletic women do. (laughs) And athletic men like to hear that too. So anyway, if you're not athletic, then just plug your ears. I'm so glad. That so we recorded this. now we are here. Um, and what we t- want to talk about, we've talked about a lot of different things we want to talk about today real quickly, real briefly, but it's very, very important is hydration. You, you had any water lately, Bersaba? All the time. All the time? <laughs> like like recently? You just want <laughs> Just because <laughs> we're talking about hydration. Yes. So let's back up. The entire universe is comprised of what, Bersaba? Energy. Energy. And space. Definitely and space. And it's also comprised of repeating patterns. Mm. And this is what's called fractal geometry in science. In hermetics, there's a law called what? Do you remember? It talks about repeating patterns. It's the Tell law me. of repeating patterns. No, it's the law of correspondence. Oh, you said science. No, I said science is fractal geometry. Oh. Yeah, we're not arguing. We're just clarifying. Okay. Uh, and in hermetics, it's the law of correspondence. Most people have heard about the law of correspondence. It's most commonly stated as what? As above? As above. So below. So below. She's on it. So basically what this law tells us, if we really simplify, is that if you want to know how your body works, then you need to look at what? How anything else works. How the universe works. Yeah. Because everything is repeating patterns. If you want to know how the universe works, then you have to look at how your body works. And you can do this with business and every relationships, everything else. Now, understanding that, how much of our planet Earth is comprised of water, Bersa? But do you know the percentage? 70%. About 70%. 70 to 71% is is water. Now, likewise, your body is comprised of how much water? I think it's 70. It's about 70%. Mm-hmm. If you're healthy. Mm-hmm. If you're healthy, which hopefully you are. Now, interestingly enough, do you think a baby's body has more or less water than an adult? Bear's I've never thought about that. As you think about it now, what do you think? Well, they look tubbier. Okay. So I would say more. More water. So <laughs> so it doesn't mean you're going to look tubby if you have enough water. But a baby's body is comprised of about 78% water. It tends to decrease over time. So our bodies tend to get more and more prunish, if you will, more and more raisin-like over time. And that's why as as you move through your chronology, you need to drink more and more water to stay healthy and to have energy and all those things. Mm. So drinking enough pure, clean water, yes. key, pure, clean water, mm-hmm. is essential for maintaining health, body functions, and high energy levels. It really is. Now, does this include Gatorade, Bersama? No. No. Does it include... That's toxic. Does it include Coca-Cola's? <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't include coffee. It doesn't even include tea. It doesn't include waters that are flavored or polluted. All right. It's clean, pure water. And the best way to get clean, pure water is right out of your tap in the kitchen, right? Uh, no. No? That's scary water. That's scary water. <laughs> Correct. That's, that's the water they're trying to kill you with. That's frightening water. Yes. We could talk about that for quite some time. In fact, a 2023... 20 tweet. Yeah, easy for me to say. A 2023 study conducted by U.S. Environmental Protection Agency found that tap water is full of PFAS. PFAS. <laughs> no, it's a, it's an acronym. Okay. <laughs> it's a family of synthetic chemi- chemicals that linger in the environment of our world as well as in the environment of your body. 
Now, here's the frightening thing about PFAS, which comes out of tap water. It's linked to cancer, obesity, thyroid disease, high cholesterol, decreased fertility, liver, liver damage, hormone suppression. Not, not a good thing. I'm not quite sure why people agreed to this. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think they did agree. I think it was snuck in. But epidemiological studies have suggested that fluoride, which is also in our tap water, is a human developmental neurotoxicant that reduces, get this, the measure of intelligence in children. That's messed up. That's really messed up. They're trying to kill us. Place, and dumbify us down. Um, placing fluoride in the same category is toxic metals like methylmercury, arsenic, and many other uh, polychlorinated biphenols. The other thing that fluoride does, which is in your tap water, is it calcifies, and this is a big one that you're the pineal gland. The pineal gland. And why? Who? Why do we care about the pineal gland? The pineal gland is your gateway to God. According to the ancient traditions, the pineal gland, which is on the top of your your head, is is the gateway to the divine. And so, every single dental office on the planet that we've experienced, and Beresford used to work in a dental office, uses fluoride. Mm -hmm. And our dentist used to recommend fluoride treatment to me every single time I went in until I said no long enough. And then he just stopped because he knew I wasn't going to take it. Did, did he offer it to you as well? No. Never did? No, he knew. He, he knew. <laughs> so um, even if you don't accept it from your dentist... Yeah. which we would encourage you not to. Your tap water is full of fluoride. So is your shower water, everything that comes out of the tap. Now, hopefully with just that little bit of data, we've made a case for drinking only clean, filtered water. We get our drinking water delivered in big 10-gallon jugs. Um, it's purified. It's, it's alkaline. And... You know, please, please don't purchase bottled water from the, the store. Now, why is it problematic to, to purchase bottled water from the store? It's about? like purchasing tap water. The, you know, the, the regulations on bottled water it's are to kill you are, to so, are so loose. And a lot of them are just glorified tap water. Here's the other thing about bottled water. You have no idea how long they've been on the shelf. And what we know is that those plastic bottles degrade, and so they go into the water, and now you're not only drinking toxic water, but you're drinking toxic water with plastic pieces in it. So please don't do that. A really great example of glorified tap water is Dasani, you know, which is produced by Coke. Imagine that. It's a great example of, you know, low regulations and just put water in a bottle and sell it and let's make some money. Once you have clean water, the question then becomes, how much is enough? How much water is enough water, Bersba? Hmm, depends. I mean, we have, what, four liters? Well, I'm... Is it like eight to ten glasses per day is that, the average or something? That's what's recommended. Yeah. And, and we would suggest that's a good start. Eight to ten, eight ounces of eight ounce glasses per day of water is a good start. Now, mm -hmm. we're not doctors, and that's no. our disclaimer. But here's our experience. We suggest that you drink a minimum of one and a half liters per 100 pounds of body weight. And that you always round up. So what that means, if you weigh 185 pounds, you should round up to 200. And you should be drinking about three liters per day. Now, how many liters do you drink per day, Bersabeau? Well, I guess I'm 185 pounds. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how, uh, this is a good point, though. How many liters of water do you drink per I day think on uh, three to four. Three to four. And well, I we'll be living in a desert, too. Then. Well, yes, and I guarantee you she doesn't even weigh close to it's 185 close. pounds. Yeah. 
She's if she did, close. I would miss her a lot. Uh, but <laughs> I'm only fifty pounds less. <laughs> Come on. So so, nonetheless, fifty five pounds. Nonetheless, she drinks a lot of water. Together, we go through about ninety to a hundred gallons of water per week. Per week. So we drink a lot of it. And yes, we do live in the desert, but it's very, very healthy to drink a lot of water and your body will equilibrate to it yeah. after a while. Initially, you'll be going to the bathroom a lot, but that's good, too, because you're cleansing out the body and you're cleansing out toxins. And eventually your body will will calibrate to it and you'll be able to not have to run to the restroom as frequently. So you're going to notice and oh, one other thing, the more active you are, the more water you should drink. You definitely should drink more water when you're more active. Yes. And you're going to notice a major difference. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time, Barrister, but when I first met you, you didn't drink a lot of water. I drank more coffee. Coffee, right. Tea. Tea. And did you start to notice a major difference in your energy level overall and your strength and your health overall as you started drinking more water? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I felt a lot better drinking more water than I did coffee. Right, right. Coffee has the opposite effect when you drink too much of it. It dehydrates you. It, yeah. So you'll notice a marked difference mm -hmm. in, in when you drink a lot of good, clean water in your overall strength, your overall energy, your overall health. And so hopefully this brief coverage for you has been valuable thank you so much for tuning in god bless you thank and we'll talk to here. you next week go have a drink of water bye <laughs>